So guys, this story is about Baki Hanma, a high school student who instills fear in the entire school. One day, Mitsunari Tokugawa, the owner of an underground wrestling championship, meets him at school and informs him that some dangerous criminals are coming to Tokyo to beat him. Recently, the world's most dangerous prisoner, Dorian, silently escaped death during a trial by pretending to hang himself. As soon as a doctor came to confirm his death, he revived, killed all the police officers, and escaped by sea after writing, I am coming to Tokyo to taste defeat. Not just him, there are four more. In Scotland's Carius prison, a prisoner named Doi Lee was given shock therapy as punishment but survived the death trial and killed all the police officers. He then publicly hijacked a military plane heading towards Tokyo, a prisoner named Sikorsky who also escaped from Evans prison in Russia. Police found out he climbed a 100-meter prison wall, which is impossible for an ordinary person. Additionally, he killed Garland, Russia's best wrestler. Then there are two more. One escaped by killing all the police officers 200 meters underwater in a submarine. Another, Ryo Yanagi, broke bulletproof glass to escape. All these prisoners left the same message, e I want to taste defeat. Five undead criminals, each charged with multiple murders, escaped prison, leaving behind the same message. You know what this means, it means they're all coming to Tokyo to defeat Baki because Baki is the underground wrestling champion. The next day, Doi Lee, one of the prisoner, kills a famous kickboxer named Rob using the razor fitted in his body. Some goons ask Baki's classmate about him and say, I call Baki we've heard he's powerful, let's test him today. Scared, the man goes to Baki and brings him to meet the goons. One of them comes forward to stab him, but then a flashback shows Baki already punched him in the face, though he didn't move from his place. The man freezes in fear, and Baki defeats the remaining goons using their special weapons against them. Suddenly, Baki sees a 7 to 3 foot tall man standing behind his classmate. Meanwhile, the police department is in chaos because Dorian, Circe, Doyle, Speck, and Ryoko Yanagi have all escaped from prison. An officer informs them that citizens saw a man crush a police van with his bare hands, which turned out to be Speck, one of the five criminals. The scene shifts to the man confronting Baki. To show off, the man shoots himself in the mouth and says, e I'm the strongest man in Tokyo. Are you Baki Hanma? Friend, I want to experience defeat. Will you help me? As soon as they shake hands, the man's hand falls off, shocking Baki. Speck then starts beating Baki insanely. After a while, the police arrive and arrest Speck. An officer says, As eh, sir, we found Officer Kanita's hand here, as eh, shocking Baki. We learn that Speck killed a police officer and left his hand there. Speck approaches Baki and says, eh, This is just the beginning, we'll meet again soon, Baki Hanma. We are then shown Yujiru Hanma, Baki's father considered the world's strongest creature, feared by police and politicians alike. Meanwhile, Ryoko Yanagi meets Go Shibukawa, the inventor of the Shibukawa style of jiu-jitsu. Despite being 70 years old, he can defeat anyone with his techniques. On the other hand, Speck is relaxing in jail when a senior inspector orders close surveillance on him. The inspector goes to the restroom but finds Speck urinating in buckets right next to him. The inspector asks, eh hey, what are you doing here? Speck replies, Hey, oh, I just came to use the bathroom. Here, have some meat buns, they're really crispy. The inspector kicks him in the groin, but Speck says, Here, eat this quietly. Then he kills the inspector along with the other police officers. Now we see Katsumi Orochi, founder of a karate style called Shin Shin Kai, nicknamed Lethal Weapon. Eh, and he is Dapo Oroki's adopted son, and after we see Keo Retsu, a genius of the Chinese Kempo fighting style, he also master of Katsumi Orochi, he almost defeated Baki in the maximum tournament, are also introduced. Katsumi is giving a lecture to his students when Dorian arrives and asks to meet Master Dapo Orochi. Katsumi first asks him to take off his shoes. Dorian takes off his shoes and then kicks Katsumi hard, gouging his eyes and trying to kill him. Katsumi kicks him back, but Dorian throws a wooden piece at his throat and says, eh, you have some strength. I guess I have to meet Master Dapo now. Dorian starts to leave, but Keo Retsu arrives and challenges him saying, eh hey, fight someone your own size. Fight me if you have the guts. Dorian pretends to cry and tries to attack Retsu's eyes with a nose hair, but Retsu dodges it. Dorian then breathes fire at Retsu, and manages to escape. Meanwhile, at Baki's school, a fitness test is taking place. In a 400-meter race, Baki outruns everyone, causing dents in the ground. In the long jump, he jumps beyond the cross line, astonishing all the students. His teacher can't understand how Baki is so strong. During pull-ups, Baki breaks the pull-up bar, making the teacher angry because Baki hasn't completed a single test properly, and his scores are low. 
Baki asks his teacher if breaking the world record in the 1,500-meter race will pass him. The teacher replies that the record is 3 minutes 26 seconds, doubting Baki can break it. Baki, confident, prepares for the race, Baki starts off running the fastest, but because of a muscle cramp, he slows down a bit and finishes last. Impressed by his talent, the teacher still passes him. Meanwhile, Mitsunari meets Kanji Igari, who fight Baki in the maximum tournament. Suddenly, Circe attacks him, and an ambulance takes Kanji away. Mitsunari takes Circe with him. At the police station, Spec has left a note saying, I will be back soon he outside his cell. Mitsunari and Sikorsky arrive at a place where all the criminals have gathered. Mitsunari welcomes them and asks why they are there. Dorian responds, E what kind of question is that? This is Japan's most famous place where the world's best fighters come. Doyle says, A I do what I want. I wanted to come here so I did. Then, Baki arrives to meet Mitsunari, and the criminals notice him. Dapo Orochi and other dangerous fighters also arrive. Now, the five criminals and Tokyo's five best fighters are face to face. Mitsunari introduces Dapo Orochi as the true founder of Shin Shin Kai Karate and Karo Yanima, the boss of the Yanima gang. Mitsunari explains that a few years ago, the Maximum Tournament, the most dangerous tournament in history, was held at this very place, and it was won by this 17-year-old boy, Baki Hanma. The criminals don't believe him. Mitsunari begins explaining the tournament rules then someone from Baki's group interrupts and says, Eh there are no rules. Start the game now. It doesn't matter where you are who you're with, whether you're bathing or with your girlfriend, you can fight wherever you want. Then, the fights between all 10 fighters start from that day. And Baki says, Eh alright then, I'll take my leave. I have homework to do. Meanwhile, the inspector sees that Spec has returned to his cell. Elsewhere, Dorian and Dapo are walking when Ko Retsu appears, seeking revenge for their previous encounter. Dapo Orochi kicks Dorian hard, eager to get his revenge. Dorian attacks with his fire lighter, but Dapo easily blocks it and says, this is my perfect defense. It can't be broken by a missile. Meanwhile, Kanji Igari confronts Sikorsky, seeking revenge and bringing some thugs with him who capture Sikorsky. Returning to Dapo Orochi, we see Dorian cut his hand with a thread. Dorian has a special lighter from which a thread stronger than nylon and thinner than a spider's web emerges. Dorian explains, eh this thread is a miracle of science. Magicians have used such threads for their tricks for a long time. Orochi realizes that Dorian had taken advantage of the earlier kick to attach the thread to his hand. However Orochi, used to breaking his hand during training, punches Dorian hard in the face, knocking him to the ground. Meanwhile, Kanji and his friends are plotting to kill Sikorsky. Kanji shoots Sikorsky five times, but it doesn't affect him. Sikorsky kills Kanji's friends, and Kanji surrenders, begging for mercy. Sikorsky ignores him and starts beating him with gym equipment, leading to Kanji's death. The scene shifts to Baki, who is out with his girlfriend Koju Matsumoto. Koju knows Baki is a fighter. As they are talking, some thugs block their path and demand money. But as soon as they look into Baki's eyes, they get scared and leave. Baki and Koju go on a date have fun, and then head back home. Koju holds Baki's hand, but we see Spec watching them from a distance. After their outing, Baki is taking Koju back home. And Koju expresses her worries about Baki's dangerous life. She says, Hey you're a real fighter. Your life is always in danger. You need to take care of yourself. If I spend my life with you, I'll always be worried. The people you fight have families too. Don't you think their wives and children will hate you if something happens to them? As Koju continues, Baki hugs her and says, hey, Just be quiet. Fighters choose this path of their own will. In the past 17 years, I haven't seen anything good. My dad and mom hated me. They always wanted me to become the world's strongest person. I chose this path, and my life's goal is to defeat my dad. If something happens to me along this path, I won't regret it. If you want to be with me, be mentally prepared. Apart from my mom, the only person I've trusted is you Koju. As they talk, Spec appears, about to attack Baki. But when Baki stares at him, Spec freezes. At that moment, Hanayama arrives. Hanayama grabs Spec's jaw and throws him away from Baki and Koju, saving their lives. He says, A your fight is with me. Stay away from Baki. Spec and Hanayama's fight begins. Spec lands a powerful kick on Hanayama's face, causing his nose to bleed. Hanayama takes off his clothes, revealing an impressive tattoo on his back marked with scars from swords. This tattoo symbolizes the Yanagihara family leaders, and only someone with immense strength can bear such a tattoo. These scars are from when Hanayama fought an entire gang alone. With this story in mind, 
The fight between Speck and Hanayama continues. Speck attacks Hanayama with anything he can find, sometimes using Hanayama's shoe, and other times lifting benches to hit Hanayama's back. However, these minor injuries don't affect Hanayama much, and he continues to fight back. Seeing this, Speck gets excited and says, eh, it's been a long time since I've met such a strong opponent. You stand there calmly like the Statue of Liberty. Just like I broke the Statue of Liberty, which people are struggling to rebuild, I will do the same to you. Speck then starts attacking furiously without taking a breath, continuously landing punches. Speck can hold his breath for over 5 minutes, allowing him to attack without pausing. However, Hanayama's strength is exceptional, far above ordinary people. He blocks Speck's punches with both hands. When Hanayama realizes that Speck's punches are losing power, he takes advantage and lands a powerful punch on Speck's face, sending him flying. Meanwhile, the police are shown, frustrated with Speck treating their jail like a hotel, coming and going as he pleases. They have tried everything to kill him, but their bullets have failed. The police resolve to kill him the next time he returns. Hanayama continues to land powerful punches on Speck, asking, are enjoying the taste of defeat? No one can match the strength of Hanayama's punches, and Speck's condition worsens. Suddenly, Speck surrenders. Hanayama is shocked at how easily Speck admitted defeat. But it was a trick. Speck had six cartridges in his hand, which he shoves into Hanayama's mouth, causing them to explode and break Hanayama's jaw almost in half. Alright guys, this is where today's video ends. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. The next part of this story will be out soon. Until then, goodbye and take care.